Many Wall Streeters are predicting the inflation plane is ready to take off. At Owning, we still have a few seats left, with 30-year fixed rates at 2.5%, 2.731 APR on them. If the experts are right and the inflation plane flies high, APRs in the twos may be a distant dream. Don't mess around. Call 8332-OWNING or go to owning.com before the refi market flies completely away from you. Maybe the experts are wrong and rates don't go up any higher. But if they're right and the plane is flying with mortgage rates reaching the fours, you'll kick yourself hard that you didn't grab a seat now. Don't be a dummy. Save the money. NMLS 2611, licensed by the Department of Financial Protection and Innovation under the California Residential Mortgage Lending Act, subject to credit approval. Call 833-852-6464 for terms and conditions. Call 833-2-OWNING for a 30-year fixed refi with a 2.731 APR today. That's 833-2-OWNING or owning.com. Hey everybody, Jay Farner here, CEO of Rocket Mortgage and Rocket Companies. Last year we saw historically low mortgage interest rates. In fact, over 1 million homeowners took advantage of refinancing or buying a new home with Rocket Mortgage. What you may not know is that interest rates are already starting to increase again. And it's likely that trend is only going to continue. Our team of experts is standing by to help you save before rates go up. With an official mortgage review from Rocket Mortgage, you'll see just how much money you could save by making a move right now. Don't look back over these next few weeks and wish that you had taken action. You could save hundreds on your mortgage payments or pay off your home loan earlier than planned. You could even take cash out of your home to pay off high-interest debt, complete home repairs, or bulk up on an emergency fund. When you want to secure a low rate, Rocket can. Call 833-8-ROCKET or visit rocketmortgage.com. Rocket. Call for cost information and conditions equal housing lender license in all 50 states and MLSconsumeraccess.org number 3030. Hello, everyone, and welcome to the Jeffrey Epstein Show. I'm your host, Bobby Capucci, and this is Daily Drop number 421. You know, tonight I figured we're going to stick with academia and we're going to talk a little bit more about Leon Black and the situation that is developing at Dartmouth. Now, we touched on this a little bit when some trustees and some alumni came out and said that they wanted Dartmouth to get rid of Leon Black's name and all ties of Leon Black to the university. And at that time, it was, you know, a few people calling for it, right? But not a a massive swell of people demanding this. Well, the tide is changing, folks. And tonight, in our article from hyperallergic.com, we're going to discuss how it's changing and what that could mean for Leon Black moving forward. Like I said, this article is from hyperallergic.com. Headline, citing Epstein ties, Dartmouth Community calls for school to rename Leon Black Art Center. Well, I don't think that's too big of a stretch, right? I mean, look... Great, you donated a bunch of money to this school. That's awesome. Too bad you're a scumbag. So, thanks for the donation, but we're pulling your name off of all of the buildings. And that's what every single one of these schools should do to any of these donors that was involved with Jeffrey Epstein. And that includes, especially, Les Wexner at Ohio State University. Because what happened there is also a travesty. Now, at Dartmouth, we talked about this a little bit, right? But we're going to get into it a little bit more tonight. And, you know, the cries are becoming louder, folks. People have had enough. People have honestly had enough. And they're demanding accountability. And it's about time. This article was authored by Valentina De La Sica. Dartmouth College alumni and students are calling for the school to rename its Black Family Visual Arts Center, BVAC, following revelations of Leon Black's financial ties to convicted sex offender, pedophile, Jeffrey Epstein. Black and his wife, Deborah, contributed $48 million towards the campus building, which houses the studio art, film, media studies departments in 2012. Well... Thanks for the donation, right? And glad that the facility was built, right? That's awesome. But your name's coming off of it. 
Just because you put up a bunch of dough to um, have your name on a building doesn't mean it stays there forever. If it comes out that you're a dirtbag, like you are, well, this is what happens. These are the repercussions. This is the deal. All right, you can't just run around and act like because you donated $48 million that everybody should just kiss your ass and your name should stay on these buildings no matter what. Now, that might be how it, how, it, how things were done in the past, but not moving forward. People aren't, people aren't going to have it, all right? And I don't just mean advocates. I'm talking about general, normal folks like myself. How long are we going to ignore it? How long are we going to turn a blind eye to it? I'm guessing for not any, not any longer, right? Because when you see what's going on here and you see people starting to demand that these elite, well, so-called elite scuzz bags are held accountable, it gives you a little bit of light at the end of the tunnel, right? Because there surely is way more of us than there are of them. Black has also served as chairman of the Museum of Modern Art in New York City since 2018. Earlier this month, Hyperallergic reported on hundreds of artists' calls for MoMA to remove him from its board of trustees. And that's what, uh... That was part of what we were talking about just just a couple minutes ago. Um, There has been a huge call for this man to be removed. And it's not just the alumni. It's not just people at the school. It's people in the, the, the world of art. People in general who are hip to the story. I can't tell you how many people I know who have contacted the Museum of Modern Art and demanded Leon Black stepping down. Now, obviously... That doesn't always work, right? But they can't ignore the outcry of people who are demanding that Leon Black is held accountable just like anybody else would or should be. In January, Black announced he would step down as CEO of his private equity firm, Apollo Global Management, after a report found that he paid Epstein $158 million in financial advising fees between uh, 2012 and 2017. Now, we talked a little bit about that this morning, obviously, talking about the Gratz and the whole entire hustle behind it. And if you don't think Leon Black was heavily involved in that, if you don't think that Leon Black was definitely getting down like that, You are wrong. That's what he was paying Jeffrey Epstein for, according to, you know, the circumstantial evidence. At least a portion of it was for him to harbor this money to find a way so Black didn't have to pay any taxes on it. Sure seems like financial malfeasance to me. And if they're going to be so quick to go after people like, say, Martha Stewart for her financial crimes, then why not some consistency here, folks? And again, that's really what it comes down to for me. I want consistency. We can't just pick and choose who's going to be prosecuted. If the law states that that's a crime and you're caught doing it, well, you should be prosecuted. I don't care if you have a bazillion dollars or no dollars. Equal justice under the law. I know, a novel idea, but it's something that we should be definitely be striving for. Conducted by the Wall Street Law Firm, right off the bat, whenever you say, oh, conducted by the Wall Street Law Firm, so basically, we're going to investigate ourselves. We're going to hire some of our buddies, some more Wall Street insiders, some Wall Street lawyers, to come on in and investigate us, because that's going to end up well. They're going to find out all kinds of deep, dark secrets. You know, they're going to be deep diving, folks, right? That's what they want to do. They're going to unearth all of the hidden secrets. Literally, none of that's going to occur, right? What they're going to do is try and save face. What they're going to do is try and put some wrapping paper on it, a nice little bow, and tell you, here it is. This is what we found. Well, there was a little bit of ignorance on the part of Leon Black, and he might not have understood some things, but it certainly wasn't criminal. He had no idea what Jeffrey Epstein was. 
Meanwhile, the rest of us are rolling our eyes so hard that our parents from wherever they're located are telling us that they're going to stay in the back of our heads if we keep rolling them. I mean, it is absolutely absurd that Deckert LLP, the law firm, actually believed that anyone was going to buy the BS that they were shoveling. Conducted by the Wall Street law firm Deckert LLP, the report found no evidence that Black had participated in criminal activity, though some have questioned whether the three-month investigation revealed the true extent and nature of Epstein and Black's relationship. Um, consider me as some, I guess, because I doubt that's the true nature of their relationship. All right? Oh, yeah. You're paying somebody $158 million, you're not having them over for some uh, brunch? Give me a break. These dudes were definitely close, and it's not even a question. And Deckert, I have about as much faith in them producing the proper information as I would have in Holden Caulfield telling me the truth. It's just not going to occur, folks. We're going to get the runaround. We're going to get the spin. Ah, I left the foils on the train. With an estimated net worth of $8 billion, however, Black's influence extends beyond the arts, with massive donations to MIT, Harvard, and Dartmouth, from which he earned his undergraduate degree. And now this is what we've been talking about, right? This is the running conversation. Uh, the reason we had Dr. DeLay on the, on the program is because of academia and how underreported all of this is. This is so much deeper than a couple of payouts here and there. This is so much deeper than Jeffrey Epstein acting as a patron to the arts, all right? This is much deeper. He wanted more. He needed more. And what was he getting from these scientists for all of this money? In a statement shared with hyperallergic Dartmouth alumni Stan Kala, Ruth Zur, Roberta Milstein, and Diana Whitney urged the university to show institutional courage. Well, that would be nice, huh? Some of these institutions stepping up and doing the right thing. I mean, Lord knows. We call upon the college to remove the Black family name, with or without Leon Black's cooperation from a visual arts center and to initiate a community-wide conversation about an appropriate renaming that demonstrates the college's commitment to address its egregious history with gender and race issues, the group writes. So obviously, according to this group, this has been a problem at Dartmouth, right? People being treated incorrectly, uh, um, issues with gender and race and Hey, look, I, I I don't know about all of that, right? I'm I, I'm I'm not some sort of a scholar who's digging into Dartmouth and what goes on on campus. But what I will tell you is this: as far as Jeffrey Epstein goes and Leon Black, yeah, those names should never be on any of your buildings. Kala, Sir, Milstein, and Whitney are founding members of Dartmouth Community Against Gender Harassment and Sexual uh, Sexual Violence. A coalition of current and former students, faculty, and staff advocating for better policies to address and prevent sexual abuse on campus. Look, it, it, that's a good thing, right? There needs to be groups and advocates advocates and activists and people working towards uh, a better treatment of everybody on campus. Because I'm sure there's a lot of... Uh, a lot of bad shit that's occurred on this Dartmouth campus, Dartmouth campus according to these people. For some members of DCGHSV, the need to reckon with Black's relationship to Dartmouth is not simply a question of effacing a tarnished name. It is inexestably tied to the history of sexual assault at the university. So obviously, like we talked about earlier, there is a pervasive problem at this university. And it's something that is not a good look, obviously, especially when you have Leon Black's name displayed prominently all throughout the campus. The building represents an ever-present insult to all Dartmouth survivors, including the nine students who as plaintiffs sued Dartmouth for enabling their professor's abuses, the 65 victims who received a settlement from the class action, and hundreds of other students who have endured sexual violence on campus, says the statement. 
All right, there. Well, what about that? Nine students who as plaintiffs sued Dartmouth for enabling their professor's abuses. So it's not systemic or anything, right? Dr. DeLay has no idea what he's talking about. Give me a break, folks. This is systemic and it's happening a lot. How many of these people who become professors are sick bastards who use this profession to hunt for victims? Now, I'm, I'm, I'm guessing a vast majority are decent people, right? You know me, I don't ever group people into giant groups and use a paintbrush, a broad paintbrush on them. I don't like to do that. But man, there sure is a lot of instances of professors and teachers being slimy, scummy sexual deviants. In 2019, Dartmouth reached a $14.4 million settlement with nine women who accused three professors in Dartmouth's, Dartmouth's Department of Psycho Psychological and Brain Sciences, Sciences of Sexual Misconduct and Rape. So these are professors, all right? Not other students, not people coming onto the campus like Ted Bundy. These are professors, part of academia, who are using their positions of power to rape and harass students. And you think it's a good idea to have Leon Black's name all over your campus, huh? Dartmouth, do better. Any of the listeners out there, if you're alumni to uh, Dart uh, Dartmouth, you need to make a phone call. Although the behavior went as far back as 2002, the college turned a blind eye, the lawsuit claimed. An open letter in solidarity with the plaintiffs, signed by hundreds of Dartmouth students and alumni, said at the time that the incidents were part of institutional culture that minimizes and disregards sexual violence and gender harassment. So obviously this is a pervasive-ass problem on the, on the campus of Dartmouth that has been going on for a long-ass time and nobody has addressed it. Well... That sucks, right? And it's not acceptable. But what better time to fix that than right now? Whitney, a 1995 Dartmouth graduate, said she was raped on campus her first year. I was 18. It wasn't anything that I reported that I was encouraged to report. I, all, I was also pretty violently sexually harassed by some drunk frat boys who tried to get into my dorm room. Those kind of things were normal behavior at Dartmouth in the 90s, she told Hyperallergic. Look, the 90s were a different time, right? I get it for sure. And I understand acting the fool and, and being a, a college guy and, you know, doing stupid things. We've all been there, right? But you don't barge into somebody's room. That's unacceptable no matter the circumstances. No gray area for me. You don't grab somebody and, and hold on to them and yank them towards you or grab them or touch. You don't do any of that, all right? It's one thing to be crude and an idiot. It's another thing to put your hands on somebody or try to barge into somebody's room. You try to barge into somebody's house, you might end up getting shot. So what's the difference of barging into somebody's dorm room? Unacceptable. Anytime. Dartmouth, she notes, was also the last Ivy League school to admit women in 1972. There's a sort of deep-seated miso misogynistic culture that lives on, Whitney said. She adds that the school has taken some steps to improve its campus culture. In 2015, President Hanlon announced the creation of a four-year sexual violence prevention program for undergraduate students. But work remains to be done. And that includes reckoning with Black's namesake, according to some members of the school's community. When I see Black's name on the building, what it means to me is that women and minorities and marginalized groups do not really matter at Dartmouth, Whitney said. All right, well, I don't know about the minorities and stuff. I, that's not really what we're talking about here. I don't know if that's really what you should see when you look at Leon Black, uh, you know, as, a, as an individual, maybe as the, the face of somebody who is destroying minorities. And if we, we're talking minorities, let's, let's add poor people to that, right? If that's the case, then cool, for sure. I definitely agree that Leon Black is a complete scumbag. But let's keep it focused to what we're talking about here, right? Let's not go off the rails. This dude's obviously an enabler of one of the most sick pedophiles of all time. Let's get him for that. Let's label him for that. Let's not jump off the rails here, right, folks? 
In 2019, 71 cases of gender-based violence. Now, see, this is important. Gender-based violence is part of this conversation. And it's a very important part of it, right? Because there is a pervasiveness of this sort of behavior that occurs on college campuses, and nobody can deny that. In 2019, 71 cases of gender-based violence were reported at Dartmouth, including 33 reports of rape, according to data provided by the College to the Clary Center. Considering that only about 20% of incidents are typically reported, the alumni statement says the numbers are likely higher. Well, we know for a fact that a lot of these assaults aren't reported, so I would guess that those numbers are a lot higher. Things don't get changed until there's a news story, until there is big hoopla, Salou said. The larger problem is that the school has no problem looking the other way, getting this huge donation, until it's a problem. She is 100% right about that. It's always been a problem, but it's only a problem to them when they're caught. It's only a problem to them when they have to answer for their bullshit. Black also endowed the Leon Black Professor of Shakespearean Studies and the Eli M. Black Distinguished Professor of Jewish Studies at the college. Oh, how awesome. What time are we playing golf, Biff? Ah, these people annoy me so much. According to the Dartmouth, Dartmouth, Black has made contributions both personally and through the Black Family Foundation. Epstein served as the foundation's director for 10 years before stepping down in 2007. A spokesperson for Black told the Dartmouth that Black played no operational role. Of course not. Black knew nothing. This billionaire worth $8 billion with a billion dollar art collection who runs around making a living on destroying people and being smarter than the other men in the room had no idea. Chew on that for a minute, folks, and see if it doesn't make you ill. A year later, in 2008, Epstein pleaded guilty to felony charges for soliciting sex from minors, including girls as young as 14. Hell of a guy, let's have him over for dinner. In fact, how about Thanksgiving dinner? He served only two-thirds of his 18-month sentence. Deckert's investigation said Black believed Epstein had served his time for the case and deserved a second chance. Boy, Leon Black sure is a hell of a guy, huh? He really is a forgiving type of fella. Now, I wonder how many former felons he has working at Apollo Global. How many do you have in your office there, Leon Black, since everybody deserves a second chance? How many former drug dealers do you have working for you, sir? My guess is not many you lying son of a bitch. In light of the recent revelations, Black said he would pledge $200 million toward gender equality initiatives and organizations supporting survivors of domestic violence, sexual assault, and human trafficking. Okay, donate it to the Survivors Fund. Do the right thing, Leon Black. Those are the people that you helped abuse. And I don't mean physically, at least nobody has said that so far, but you enabled their abuse. You facilitated their abuse. So, it's time to pay the piper. In their statement, the group of alumni suggest Black could give a tenth of that to his alma mater to work directly towards changing the culture of male primacy that feeds into the Clary statistics. What if Black himself were to ask Dartmouth to change the name of the building, the alumni ask? What if, for example, a representative committee of students, alumni, faculty, and staff were to suggest a new, more appropriate name? Then the Black family could take credit for wanting to help change the harmful culture at Dartmouth to create a campus safe for all students from the degradation of gender-based violence. Well, that's not going to happen. That's pie-in-the-sky type shit. If Leon Black does that, he's basically admitting that he was involved in this. So it's going to have to be forced. If anyone's waiting for these billionaires to do things on their own, we're going to be waiting a long time. There is a real failure here to acknowledge what's going on, and it's part of a larger problem, said uh, Sir in an interview with Hyperallergic. This defensiveness is the basic power structure saying, we can't question power. 
And I agree with that. That is what the power structure is saying. But it's time to really challenge it and to challenge all of these scumbags that exist at the very top of it. Because remember, folks, it doesn't matter if you're a dude, you're a woman, you're a, you're rich, I mean, you're, you're a poor, you're middle class, none of it. They look at all of us the same as pieces on a chessboard. College spokesperson Diana Lawrence told the Dartmouth that the school has no plans to change the center's name. Lawrence has declined to comment further for this story. Of course, coward-ass shit, right? They always decline, but they'll come out with some canned-ass BS statement. Dartmouth is saying, well, we looked at this, and none of this money is tainted by Epstein. So, it doesn't matter, Zer said. Shouldn't we be better than that? Apollo Global Management has not yet responded to Hyperallergic's request for comment from Leon Black. Do not hold your breath. Leon Black is not responding to any comments from any of these news outlets. He knows better. He's not stupid. As much as he'd like you to believe that he is stupid, folks, he is not. He's going to keep his mouth shut. And unless it's forced and he is compelled to do so, his name will remain on those buildings. If you'd like to contact me, you can do that at bobbycapucci at protonmail.com. That's B-O-B-B-Y-C-A-P-U-C-C-I at protonmail.com. You can also find me on Twitter at B-O-B-B-Y underscore C-A-P-U-C-C-I. All of the links that go with this episode can be found in the description box. All right, everybody, I will be back tomorrow morning and we will pick up where we left off. Many Wall Streeters are predicting the inflation plane is ready to take off. At Owning, we still have a few seats left with 30-year fixed rates at 2.5%, 2.731 APR on them. If the experts are right and the inflation plane flies high, APRs in the twos may be a distant dream. Don't mess around. Call 8332-OWNING or go to owning.com before the refi market flies completely away from you. Maybe the experts are wrong and rates don't go up any higher. But if they're right and the plane is flying with mortgage rates reaching the fours, you'll kick yourself hard that you didn't grab a seat now. Don't be a dummy. Save the money. NMLS 2611, licensed by the Department of Financial Protection and Innovation under the California Residential Mortgage Lending Act, subject to credit approval. Call 833-852-6464 for terms and conditions. Call 833-2-OWNING for a 30-year fixed refi with a 2.731 APR today. That's 833-2-OWNING or owning.com. In the time it takes to say, Ecolab's protocols and hospital disinfectants are helping to keep this grocery store cleaner, a shopper in this store has touched a shopping cart, opened a freezer door, opened another freezer door, touched a checkout screen, and paid for... Is that six pints of ice cream? Nice. Look for the Ecolab Science Certified Seal and see a commitment to advancing cleaner, safer practices.